Hi. Hi. I'm Isabel. And I'm Hannah. And this is Fiber Content Knitting Podcast, Season 2, Episode, episode five. 5. That was nice. Thanks. <laughs> um, welcome if you're new and welcome back if you watched us before. We say Season 2 because um, our previous channel was mysteriously deleted. Um, but we have not been deterred. We're we are here. extremely experienced knitters <laughs> and kind of not so experienced YouTubers. So I would come agree. here for the knitting, stay for the bloopers. <laughs> no, we love we love podcasts. We are two Brooklyn based knitters um, and crafters, primarily knitters, uh, who met like three, four years ago over oh, a shared yeah. love of knitting. Um, and yeah, so it's like late February right now. So we're kind of in the midst of knitting season in New York. So the slight signs of spring are starting to Do show. you have the sense that like the cozy knitting season is fleeting? I'm like, I have anything thick, I have to finish it. Um, yes, and also I'm feeling this year like I actually want to commit to starting to knit spring knit soon. Mm. Because I feel like what happens is I'm like, like what I want to do right now, because it's, you know, th it was 32 degrees and snowing last weekend is like I want to like cast on like a rustic whole scar and sweater but I'm holding back that impulse because by the time I finish my fingering yeah. which, which will inevitably be like a fingering weight sweater it will be like July so that's such a good point yes and I'm like eyeing the spring nets that are starting like, to pop I'm up I'm like sad about it yeah for like hug a knitting season to be coming to a close yeah but my mental health is happy so it's fine. yeah and it's like a beautiful sunny day here. So. Beautiful sunny day. And TikTok informed me that it is a full moon tonight. So um, that feels like feminine and mystic and like it's right that we're knitting together it's and right. filming. It just, it's, it's so totally right. right. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, okay, should we start with some FOs and then we'll, you know, see if we get distracted along the way. Let's start. So my first FO um, is this little baby scarf that oh, I did. incredible. It was an advent scarf. It's the um, turtle dove shawl or scarf by Sarai Nordland. And um, Hannah is very good at holding stuff up. Wow. Yeah, I love it. It was, wow. the idea was that a quarter of it was released every week of oh advent. Um, I, we we're both quite Jewish. However, um, I am now dating a Christian woman. And not and just like slightly Christian, like she, she is ordained. She is going like, to be a priest. Is, okay, like. <laughs> An Episcopal priest, which is yes. um, the Catholic's gay cousin, as she likes to say. Um, nice. So it's been very good because I'm a little bit less scared of Christians now. Nice. And um, Advent is super fun. So that was really cute. And I made it... I finished it in January, so it was a little late. Um, but honestly, like, pretty good. It's knit with um, a yarn combination I've used before for a vest, but it's... Um, the exact same yarn combination? Exact same yarn combination, but undyed. I used to dye yarn, and so this is a leftover undyed skein. The other piece was knit with this... Mo so, this is knit with alpaca, baby alpaca, and mohair held together. Which, like, the drape... It's like literally it's the really soft yeah, it's beautiful. and um, the vest I knit was with dyed alpaca and this mohair. This is just white alpaca undyed. You're so cute. I can't. This is actually not really working. <laughs> <laughs> but like that is working. This is for sure working. Um, and yeah. The <laughs> yeah. Um, what it is is that I've been sick for like two months and I'm coming out of it and it's like aggressive. Do you know what I mean? But um, so woo. <laughs> <laughs> the um, mohair is from Le Petit Point Paris, which is one of the only, if not the only, current um, indie dyer in France. Oh, really? Because, well, Le Bien Aimé, but she no longer has like a brick and mortar. Um, oh, and they have their own they store. They have a store. Wait, and that's amazing. I like love them so much, and I recently was just like, damn, I really love her colorways, and my cat is trying to drink Hannah's tea. Um, let's hold her up. It's been a minute since she had a cameo. Yeah, she really hasn't. Did she this? is the official... Oh, she's seagull. She's the official mascot of... She's like... Um, cyber oh, and she's not enjoying being held, but she is so cuddly. I'm a better cat mom than this usually. You know, I okay, believe yes. in cat consent, but... Um, yeah, Bugsy is the official <laughs> mascot of cyber content knitting. Um, <laughs> and so this 
what did you think you know this was funny because i feel like there's so much like like the only other kind of mystery knit along i know is the stephen west one like mm -hmm. which i feel like has so much there's so much effort around like maintaining its secrecy and mm -hmm. it's like almost like a little culty at times which is wonderful i feel like that, yeah. that type of excitement is awesome and like definitely uh inc i encourage that in the knitting world but how did you feel like this kind of compared to that experience did you feel like you were part of did it feel like you were part of an mcal like were you following the hashtag um do you feel like sorry kind of fostered a good knitting so environment good I love sorry. I mean, it wasn't that social to be honest. Yeah. Um, I did follow the hashtag. Um, it was mostly something that me and my partner did together. Mm -hmm. um, she hasn't finished yet. But really? Because she was kind of like knitting through it fast. I know. Last I um, saw her. You know, there are like other mystery knit alongs, but this one definitely. I mean, it's the same pattern throughout. Like, it mm -hmm. doesn't really change that much. Um, and sorry has a bunch of like sh shawlets. I don't know scarflets. Yeah like little baby guys yeah she is good at that with t fun texture so i was just kind of like i have got like you wanted to knit this regardless of the knit along experience kind of i was just like this is fun it's like yeah. using up a little less than a skein that i have in, in two different things totally. um oh and what i was gonna say is the woman i don't know her name but behind Le Petit Point paris mm -hmm. said that i asked her and she said she would ship and custom tie whatever we f I found that I liked on her website in any base um and I was like I will be in touch wait she's and it's like not that expensive iron. it's like in the 20 euros per skein range yeah but even for like cashmere or like fancy like uh, fancy stuff so and her colors are really beautiful yeah so something to keep in mind when I have money again um because I spent a lot of money at Vogue Knitting Live that we'll talk about later um, so that's my first little FO and I was really proud of myself because I had, I made kind of like monthly knitting goals for the first couple months of the year, um, to like finish FOs and I totally slayed in January. So. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. You've really been knitting away. Cool. Um, yeah, I love this. I think it's so unique and you can just kind of, the way that I've been loving seeing people style them is like underneath kind of the collar of a wool coat and just having it like tuck out and be a little accessory so that. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'm feeling definitely that winter, like, monotony of, like, putting on the same coat every day and mm. just covering yourself in a sleeping bag, essentially, every time <laughs> you leave the house. And I feel like this is a nice way to brighten that up. I like it with the collar of your shirt. It's yeah. kind of, like, cowgirl energy. Oh, my God. And I'm, you going, I mean? I'm going to see, like, Western music tonight. So, I'm like, Ooh. maybe I need to steal this. You yeah. can borrow it. I really, yeah. It is, I like, kind of like a luxurious bandana, like a winter bandana. It's like a winter bandana. Mm -hmm. I love it. And she has lots of different ones and different textures, so yeah have yourself some fun <laughs> and sorry so we'll talk about vogue knitting live in a second but sorry northland was like in new york city and i didn't, I didn't her. see her either i think i was like too nervous like i was like i can't go out and like seek you like she's just such wait a, like, did you know where she was no but i feel like if i had I actually yeah, don't think like, she was there out. on saturday and sunday i think she was like mostly there on friday um based on her instagram but <laughs> i was just like enjoying breathing the same air as her and that felt like a, a gift within itself you know <laughs> yeah i like her a lot I actually haven't worn this yet, but I do have like a black big wool coat with a lapel, yeah. so I get scared it's going to fall out because my lapels are kind of like unstructured, mm -hmm. but maybe if I just like sewed a little stitch. Is yeah, totally. Crazy? No, I don't think that's crazy. She's cute. All right. Beautiful. So that's the first FO of the year. Yeah. Um, I'll do, I guess, one of my accessories. Maybe I'll do this and we'll like segue into Vogue Knitting Live because I bought this yarn. Great. Right, actually. So this is a pretty unique hat. A finish it's gonna oh it's kind of picking up a little bit it's perfect wait show the bottom like the cap so this is a really kind of simple looking hat but the construction is a, a little bit involved the it's called the ribbed watch cap from church house no church mouse yarns which is a yarn shop um, in Maine, it's one of their house patterns Where can I, wear it? I found it online doing a really extensive search because um, I knit it for my boyfriend for Valentine's Day, and he is wildly particular, and so I knew that knitting this hat would be kind of, like, I couldn't just go to any of my go-to patterns. I'll also say, like, my, like, my preferred hat size, which you've seen, is kind of like gnome cap, like, I find that to be really cute, um, but he wouldn't like something like that. So... <laughs> 
we did and you look so good at like it looks so good as <laughs> kind of a slouchy beanie on you mm -hmm. um so I did a bit of an extensive search, found this one, and he was like, I like those decreases. I like the way it's um, lying on that guy's, uh, on that guy's head. Um, What's it made out of, Hannah? So it's made out of 100% uh, cashmere from... Uh, Clinton Hill cashmere? No, it's not Clinton Hill cashmere. It is from... No way. So is that less than a skein? Yeah. Wow. This is the cashmere. Hunt Valley Yarns is what it's Hunt Valley Farms or something or Hunt Valley Yarns. Um, I have a second one, but I just need to show one today. So this is the cashmere. You can see it's like lace, lace, lace weight. Oh, did you hold it double? Held it double, knit on a size oh. four. So I completely modified this pattern. Funnily enough, the pattern itself calls for a lace weight yarn, which is like, it's knit on size zero and size one, that pattern that he found. I was like, classic, the pattern he oh, so you is totally like- Oh, so totally modified so it. So I totally modified it, but I bought the pattern still because I wanted these decreases, which are really unique. It's really unique, yeah. Um, and look, honestly, look like a cheap, like, and I mean this in an, I don't know, I don't have to like, you know, qualify this, but they kind of look like the decreases in a, like a cheap store-bought beanie in the sense that it just like looks like a machine decrease. And part of that is because you decrease it on this side and oh. then turn it inside out. So it almost mimics like a store-bought hat where they sew, where they have like clearly have some sort of tube and then sew down in the crown, huh. if that makes sense. And then they turn inside out. Is that what you did? Did you sew it? No, it's decreased and then you just turn it inside out, but it looks almost like the, the fabric's folded in. It's, it's really nice. And it's sort of a flat round top yeah. instead of what usually there's like a little pucker in exactly. most knit hats. And that was, I think also because I did the decreases they say, and then I also decreased knit one row decrease one row knit one row and then towards the end you just decrease all those rows um it's perfect i thought i totally thought it was clinton hill cashmere yeah like um, i mean the cashmere is so hunt valley yarns it's like i can't remember exactly how much this cashmere costs but it's like pretty cheap for how much cashmere it is um and they were at vogue knitting live uh which i which Isabel and i went to i was actually working at a booth with my friend jasmine at eureka oki's yarn booth she is um uh, a canadian based yarn dyer and she needed help at the yarn booth and my my friend jasmine from our knitting club um was like i did it last year i really love her um it's a super fun experience kind of cool to be on the other side of things so that's what i did for the weekend and of course got some like yarn buying breaks and during one of those i bought this yarn if you don't want the rest I will buy it from you. Oh, really? Um, Unless you want yeah, to maybe. make yourself the same hat. But I kind of want to make myself the same hat. That's totally yeah. fair. But I do too. It's, it's really a cool pattern. It's perfect. And I always knit hats in really bright colors to be like, but yeah, you've been yeah. killing it with your white hat last time too. I, I love about that it. white hat. Um, and he wears it every day and I had to steal it for this video. So success. <laughs> and I will say, um, I for hats, I just wanted to note this. The edge is really nice. So I do a, uh, I think it's called a German, German stretchy cast on. I believe that's what it's called. Huh. It's like a long tail cast on, but you just do kind of like one more flick of the yarn and it gives you a little bit y more yarn and it gives you more give in the cast on edge. Um, and that's what I've been doing for hats. And, and I did it for the, the mittens I'm about to show. And I do it also for socks because I find that a tubular cast on can often stretch and stay. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have the same as elasticity as this German long tail cast on. That's cool, I haven't heard of that. So that's what I, I've been using it for years and I really like it. Wow, I love it. Yeah. Cool, ugh, I might make one. So wait, tell us about your Vogue Knitting Live experience. Um, or do you wanna wait for, until acquisitions? No, we can talk about yeah, it. Yeah, let's chat. Um, I just like think it's one of my favorite yarn events totally. um, in the calendar, <laughs> um, at least in the New York area. I think it's so, chill and like run I don't feel like I usually buy a ton at Rhinebeck proper because it's so overwhelming um but Vogue really has everything that I want to purchase <laughs> and shouldn't pay like it's you know but um the temptation is really there and like I feel like you really get to talk to people and it's just it's just so mellow and beautiful it's in like the Marriott in Times Square which is kind of like yeah, like but swanky it's, <laughs> and I will say as like an, as two native New Yorkers it's pretty fun to play Taurus for a weekend yeah we I um I ate at the Times Square Olive Garden afterwards <laughs> oh my god <laughs> 
<laughs> with my with uh, I we went separately because Hannah was working uh, with my girlfriend and some friends, and because we were like we're hungry and we're in Times Square, like this is terrible. What do we do? And they were like, wait, I've never been to Olive Garden, and it was so funny because and I felt kind of classist about it actually. <laughs> Although I will say the Times Square one was a lot more expensive than other ones. I'm sure. Um, yeah. But my partner's from Ohio, and she was like, oh, this is like where we went for like special occasions and right. you know and like I was like or me and my New Yorker friends were like oh, we're going to Olive Garden like so funny um and so I think that that might have been the I realized call you needed. yeah maybe I was but anyways it was lovely actually I loved it a lot so <laughs> <laughs> as long as you're self-aware it's okay right but yeah. um yeah, so let's all not be classist, but also um, it was swanky. We played tourist, beautiful. The Marriott is like dramatic. There's like 45 elevators, um, but it's just like nice and mellow. So can I, let me talk Attention. a little bit about- Please, I, please digress. <laughs> well, no, I'm not. I'm kind of just gonna <laughs> give a little bit of background for the viewer who maybe has not done a yarn festival before. <laughs> yeah. So I also feel like the feedback on this year's VKL, aka Vogue Knitting Live, was like uber positive. Also like coming off of um, like a few botched like yarn festivals. Like mm -hmm. Rhinebeck this year was so rainy and like a bit mm -hmm. of a drag. And um, also I know that the like the Seattle Yarn Festival, Eureka was telling me this, like was canceled and they didn't really? like, like dyers and teachers had already instructors had already booked their hotels and like booked all the stuff and and they didn't um I reimburse anything I, I forget what i think it's called like strings or someone mm -hmm. will correct me but like in any case that's like now flop and so it was just so refreshing to be part of a yarn festival that was like so well run so and like i say this as someone who worked it like super like kind to the vendors um and Rhinebeck is like more of an experience and about like being there and like meeting everyone and chatting and and it's like sheep and farmers totally. and equipment and and it's all donuts, outside right yeah. and so it's like also like a bit of an adventure and this is like for the knitter who's like I want to touch beautiful yarn mm -hmm. and like get close and intimate with it not mm -hmm. be inundated with crowds um and there's a much better shopping experience it's like yeah. a little bit like I remember last year going and having a really like at that point, like I wasn't, I didn't really have any holes in my stash that I was looking to fill. So I was like there and I was like, okay, this isn't like great if you're not looking to buy, but if you're like mm -hmm. looking to just kind of expose yourself to new yarns, new dyers, it is the festival. And I will say like, I, I mean, I bought one sweater quantity and like some stitch markers, but I also just like, it was such a pleasure to get yeah. to know the yarns in that mm -hmm. way. And like, get to know the dyers and there's I mean and there's like silly stuff there's like you know there's there's a really lovely panel on like diversity in the knitting world and there's all kinds of different like important conversations happening and like um different panels but then also and classes but then also there was like you know a pearl soho yarn toss where they're just like throwing skeins at the crowd <laughs> I was and so excited. Like, oh. Did you, were you there for it yeah we couldn't get like, like it was too close <laughs> I'm sure everyone went crazy but so it's like good vibes um and kind of yeah but for sure more glamorous um and also like something I experienced because I was like talking with all the people who were coming to the booth and buying yarn which also I was like this is so much fun and I could see myself like totally if I needed to work at a yarn shop at one point <laughs> in my life like it wouldn't be the end of the world yeah um far from it Ugh, I wish I could get one of those jobs guys I'm in grad school so if anybody wants to hire me to work in a yarn shop yeah literally hit us up um Please. And like it was few and far between. Go on. Sorry. Yeah, that's true, <laughs> especially in New York. Um, but anyway, it was like so fun chatting with people, and it was so cool how many people um, came with their friends. Like, we're just staying the weekend and like doing full mm -hmm. yarn tourism things. Like, Vogue Knitting Live is like a bit of a almost like a travel experience. So they had like a broad people who went and saw like a Broadway show Thursday night, and then like uh -huh. went to go to a few classes Friday and Saturday, and like how many people were actually doing that as like their yarn trip of the year yeah um and I was just like wow you know in 20 years I or even now you know if I had if, if that was part of my lifestyle like <laughs> would love to go with like my friends and yeah just have, and like, stay a, at the Marriott like in Times yeah, Square yeah and like have a full weekend of it like it just seems yeah. so fun so I mean I would say to that festival 100% and I will say like I always um I now all I want to do when I travel is do yarn tours yeah which is for better and for worse yeah. so <laughs> but I um 
I wasn't gonna buy stuff, but I have been wanting to buy something from Camellia Fiber Co Company. We've been dying to, yeah. For like years. Um, and they had this really lovely woman, I don't know her name, but she was so kind and so like quick and she was just a very good salesperson. Cool. Um, and was just like, this is what you can do with it. So anyways, this is what I got. Mm. Um, you can't quite see, there's like red in here and pinks. Yeah. Um, I got the Sylvan Fingering, which is alpaca, silk, and cashmere. And the wow. Surrey Lace, which is alpaca Wow, and silk. this is a really soft feel Surrey. It, feel this oh way. my gosh. Wow, so, these are crazy. This is a crazy combo. I know. <laughs> I love it with all my heart and soul. Oh, it's called New York also. It's cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then this one's like Winterberry. And they actually, I think right now, although probably not by the time we upload this, have like a three day like order this um colorway so but um i wanted i was gonna make a v-neck the sorry nordland has like a cable v-neck oh, with yeah. like the seed stitch i love that then i was like i kind of want something stockinette to show this like really subtle color variegation yeah um and so then i was like maybe i want to make the mm, two of wands um wrap, wrap. top however totally. It is actually not as size inclusive as I thought, and oh. it is like a cup. It's like two inches too small. Oh! But it would have like four to six inches negative ease, and I instead of two. Yeah. I was like, mm. yeah. Um, but Florence of Florence Knitting is just put out a test call for oh, a wrap top. Oh my god! Amazing. And it's super cute, and it has like ribbing at the bottom and a thicker um, tie. Yeah. And then the two of wands wrap top. Um. And I applied, but she hasn't answered. And she said she was choosing last weekend, so I'm heartbroken. Mm. But I think I'm going to hold out, even though it kills me, because I, like, want with all my heart to start knitting this. So two things to that point. Yeah. It is hard to find a good wrap top oh my God. It's like they're really not that many. And, like, especially if you're looking for a certain fit, I feel mm -hmm. like that's, uh, I don't know, that's kind of like a, there's a dearth of those in the in, in the patterns. Yeah. Um so I don't know if you've been watching Kreia Bear recently, but she is knitting a wrap top for her mom's wedding, and she, a wrap sweater for her mom's wedding, and she also was like, uh, encountered the same issue, so she's designing one as well, whether or not she puts out a pattern. Neat. Okay, well, TBD, so but I have been like eyeing that, I'm like, I just feel like no. she'll come out with something good. Yeah, um, I have to, I haven't watched her in a minute, I will check that out. And my friend just cast it on... The My Favorite Things knitwear wrapped, or maybe it's Gregoria Fibers wrapped up. Mm -hmm. One, I think it's actually My Favorite Things. Also not size inclusive. Also not size inclusive, but it is so oversized that it might, you know. Maybe. You could take a gamble, but um, not. Part of me, yeah. yeah. Part of me is also like, a v-neck could be really nice. Or when I show what I'm about to finish, I kind of want to make it the same exact thing, but with a different I would love, color. yeah, that'd be Just really like nice. Just like a v-neck, like a ribbed v-neck. Yeah. Know. So, TBG, but I like, I'm desperate to cast it on because I'm about to finish a sweater and it's just, it like, You're about to, you've, yeah, you've been, let's just see some of your sweaters because, okay, you've been pretty prolific. So my second January, my second and final January cast FO. Mm, my God. Ta-da. I'm sorry, I'm like in here. No, it's amazing. Is, um, we need to this show it sweater. Off. I don't know how. Wow, to... it's such a pretty gauge. <gasps> Look at those decreases <laughs> or increases. I guess. Yeah. Amazing. You can ragged. see the fuzzies on it, and then it has, I know the block is picking up everything. Um, a big, a big old slit. It's the November. It's this is like terrible to show. I know it's. <laughs> <laughs> is this good? Can you see? Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Well, whatever. So it's, it's just beautiful. like your basic. Is this yeah. Good? <laughs> it's great. Um. We'll take some FO shots also and put them yeah. on Rav. Um, and then, oh, and then I have this little half sewn down. I love um, it. This is the back. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is <coughs> fuzzy. Um, <laughs> it is the Eon sweater from November Knits. Um, and it is knit in Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino in Charcoal. Um, it is so cool that you held this single also. I just love how... And it's kind of... I like it. Yeah. I mean, I had used it to make my mom something held with um, mohair. Yeah. And it's a little rough, but it's... No, it's softened up. Did you block it? Yeah, I did. I was going to say it feels Here, like I will soft. try it on. Yeah, try it I on. I feel like it's the interest 
it, or the the like it, yeah the interest is like in the oh back and the gosh. sides it, I love it with your high waisted jeans also it's yeah. so pretty it the slit is like right am I kind of yeah. where my waist is small Amazing. so it's really cute yeah it's and really... I like the sleeves it's like, oh, it's amazing. cute. <laughs> um, so it's just like basic, but then it's got some fun on the side. <laughs> and have you been wearing it? Or I've like, actually worn it like yeah. three or four times. It's very warm, and I work in a school right now, That's which like is like overheated. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think, especially like as it's spring, I can wear it like when I'm out and about without a jacket. Totally. Um, and because of the slit, like, it really. I feel like it fits you. It perfectly. does fit me perfectly, thank you. It's really hard to show, but yeah. It's, I feel like it fits you literally perfectly. Like thank you so yeah. much. I've been having some good luck with fit. Yeah. Which was my goal, so I'm really happy about it. Um, I don't know about her knits. I like her stuff. She yeah. doesn't have a lot of patterns. This is like kind of her claim to fame one. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I've seen a lot of people knitting it as well. Yeah, it's sort of, yeah. yeah, it's kind of taken off. I saw a lot of samples of it at VKL. But, oh, really? Um, Did that I, inspire you or you had started No, it? I was almost yeah. done by then. It was a quick one too. Mm -hmm. I mean, because it's... Um, worsted, right? It's worsted weight. Yeah. So, but again, because of the slits, I mean, and I you, I chose like a, like a rustic warm yarn, but the side... Um, does make it a little less like oppressively warm right it's amazing and that but it is like a nice level of warmth because it's that rust it's you know not yeah. treated wool yeah um yeah, yeah. Non super wash yeah and you can see in my little jean yeah <laughs> i'm just, i'm really inspired i honestly like kind of wanted that one yeah it's a really good knit and i yeah. think like i, I mean, just love the big slit at the side like i feel like that's so cute yeah i was conflicted about the crew neck initially because i don't really do a crew neck and i feel like there's not a ton of interest in the front mm -hmm. and i have seen i don't remember from when who but like a similar thing mm -hmm. a v-neck but i actually think it would be too much going on yeah. and um it's grown on me i think it's like perfect i love the drama of the side split and then mm -hmm. like it's kind of like business in the front party on the yeah. side perfect. i saw this like plus size woman in industry city like three years ago wearing like black culottes mm -hmm. and like a ribbed black drape like this sweater basically yeah and i was like I want that and yeah. so I did it and I'm really happy um and I'm really happy because I wanted just like basic wearable I want to be one of those people who like actually wears their knits to work and to everything and I feel like I now have I'm like st st yeah. it's happening so I'm really happy amazing um and I didn't swatch and I still succeeded because you, are you serious it fits you so, like in the <laughs> Thank arms you. like I feel like it fits you in the arms yeah it's, it is it's literally for there's no like bunching I know I, I'm so happy <laughs> You're being like bad cop. Like I feel like I have to be like yeah. good cop, or I'm like, or am I? You're being good. I don't know. I don't know what this is. A cop. I don't know. A cop. We're not cops. Okay. <laughs> Ixnay on the. Ops I'm just saying. I'm okay. just saying that swatch. The moral of that is you should swatch, even if Isabel can get away with it. I don't know. It's been a couple of sweaters now, and I will say I think it's just because of the experience. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean. And mm -hmm. but that being said, I'm starting to knit, and I really don't want to twirl because I'm like bringing the bad habits over. Yeah. Um, and I'm not gonna twill and I'm gonna see what happens. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I think if it makes you happy, like if it's gonna take away some joy, then like, fuck it. Right. And you'll learn from your mistakes. But anyways, moving on because who was it? Maker <laughs> B was like, it's not that edgy if you don't swatch. And I was like, you're so cool. And I've been dissed <laughs> in her um, podcast, not to my face. She, I'm, she's a really, really nice person. I don't think she would do that. Um, but I was like, oh snap. <laughs> All right, Hannah, what's your next? next? <laughs> FO. Um, my next FO is my only other FO, um, which are these Olay oh. mittens by Paula wow. Strict. Uh, they're knit in half fisherman's rib, and they are just a luxurious rustic mitten. <laughs> and I have been so wearing them cute. all the time. It is so fun to knit a mitten, like something that you don't think of as having like a unique size, AKA your hands. <laughs> like it is really fun to knit a mitten that fits you perfectly. Yeah. So these are my like luxurious mittens. Um, mitten oh, mittens. They look Sorry. knit mittens. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know, I couldn't say more about the pattern. It was so straightforward. The only thing I did, as I mentioned, was a different cast on. I had tried the cast on they recommended and found it to be too loose, as mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, so I did my own cast on, which doesn't give it a two, or uh, doesn't give it kind of like an invisible edge, but I, I don't, it doesn't bother me. Um, 
I knit it on a size two needle. I think it calls for either a 2.5. Yeah. With, with worsted weight. Yeah. It was honestly, I think that makes it warm. Makes it really warm. I think we were talking about, like I just mentioned, I was like, in a little bit of a knitting rut until I got to my current whip. Mm -hmm. And I think it was this project. I was knitting it mm -hmm. on size two metal DPNs, which is just, I don't yeah. like knitting on metal DPNs. I don't love even knitting on DPNs either, but for a mitten and socks, I don't like, I'm not a huge, invis uh, what's it called? What's the loop called? Not magic loop. Magic. I'm not a huge magic loop person. I am. Um, and so I was knitting on size two DPNs. The yarn is Jaeger Spun BFL. Um, this is from uh, Maine, and I bought the yarn in Maine, and it's from a Maine uh, mill. And love this yarn. I actually thought I needed two skeins of it, and then um, I didn't even use one. So what are you gonna do? I don't know. I actually don't know what I could do with this. I might just like make a second pair of mittens for somebody I love. Um, for me. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I, it's, I don't know, I'm a little bit, nice. I'm not bummed, but it's like, it's a yarn that's a little bit, it's perfect for men's, a little bit rough for me for a hat, which is what I would usually do mm -hmm. with a one skein. So, I don't know, TBD, I think I might do another pair of men's. Um, yeah, like a big, um, a big man one. Yeah. Well, not, it's kind of funny because it's like, I, it's really like, I use like basically one skein mm -hmm. and I have really tiny hands, so I feel like. There are very few people I, I don't know in any case i might do a different pattern but um yeah this was these were luxurious and took a long time but i've been wearing them all the time so i don't know it's also funny you know we work so like we take so long to knit um sweaters that will wear like max i don't know, me max like once a week and then like mittens i wear every day during the winter it's like i should take time and yeah energy into making beautiful accessories as well so that was kind of the goal of these i love it yeah okay Amazing. So that's all for our FOs. Yeah. Um, you I have an almost FO. I have an almost FO. Which I'm just certainly so show. excited. Um, I'm just working on the sleeves, which are two at a time, so it might make it a little awkward to show. Um, here she is. Wow. And wow. Oh, you're I know. It's, it's hard to show the collar right now, but essentially, here she is. You need a, yeah, the <laughs> collar will be blocked. Um, and it has a crochet edge. Um, boop, <laughs> to, which will hopefully keep it flat once it's blocked. Um, mm. This is the chambray sweater by mm. Atelier Amelie. Um, and I'm about to do my last decrease um, for the sleeves and then knit like wow. four or five more inches. Wow. Oh, this yarn is crazy. This is knit in wool folk snow. Oh, this yarn Fingering is crazy. weight, but on like size six or seven size seven so it's like wow. moving along it was designed for two strands of mohair or sari together oh. um but i think this has been perfect for it i mean it's like totally it's a great marl in my opinion it's not like an aggressive marl it's like a very like subtle marl no it's like a newspaper marl yeah. a newspaper marl <laughs> i love that um and it's it's perfect i like love it with all my heart and soul and this is the one that i was like maybe these but with like, cause I like the shape of this, mm -hmm. but with like a different collar. So I, I made a couple of mods. Okay. Um, the collar is supposed to be a Pico edge, which is like a little boop, 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 boop. Um, but I didn't like it in this yarn. I just felt like it was like very big and I wanted yeah. it. It's preppy and girly, but I wanted, I didn't want like that girly. Right. Um, so um, I made Victoria, I, I, bet I'm, I kind of made her. She was like, I'm not, not right now, baby. And I was like, <laughs> But yes or no. <laughs> um, so she did the crochet edge. Um, and this is the best. Oh, so that's one mod. My other mod is that um, the sleeves are supposed to be like big and then cinched. Sure. And I'm just like decreasing, decreasing. the heck out of them because I wanted this to be very just like like more subtle and the collar is like the that's the pop. Um, yeah. And then it's also the best um italian bind off i've ever done amazing <laughs> like, did you do the sewn mm, or did you knit it i think it has to be sewn. Uh, yeah, yeah it's yeah amazing but i didn't do the like prep two rows and it's just no, like no, perfect yeah. so i fucking love this god oh this sweater is like perfect i think it's gonna be amazing i'm hoping it grows a tiny bit when it's blocked because it is like a little bit fitted but it's honestly yeah. fine and um i got the yarn at cornwall yarn shop 
and I got 10 skeins mm. for 90 bucks on clearance. That's crazy. And I have, I'm gonna have like three and some change left, wow. which is also crazy. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. Yeah, this yarn is so soft, you have to. Uh -huh, you think? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, like hold them together? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. I love that. That would be nice. I Maybe I don't really... need a cashmere black hat. Maybe this is like close I mean, it's to basically like... The wool folk yarns go crazy. It's, it's freaking like... nice. I'm scared it's going to pill. If you want a soft yarn, do wool folk. I do love wool folk. Yeah. And I will say like, I was scared. I, yeah. Are we scared it's going to pull or it's kind of nice that it's tomorrow? It's a very loose pill. I mean, it's a very loose um, ply. ply. Yeah. But we'll see. I, I Maybe I don't even care. It's like perfect. You also won't be able to see it, I will I say. could not recommend this yarn enough. It has been an absolute pleasure. I'm like sad that it's over. I actually really like the idea of a hat. Maybe yeah. I'll do that exact hat, but in this. Yeah. Um, Literally like bravo, Isabel. Thank you. Um, for so many reasons, but also because your modifications, I feel like made this, like so. this, this sweater, if you had followed it to a T and also used like a light blue or like a light pink yarn mm -hmm. would have a totally different effect. Yeah, but now it's me. And it's now me. this is like, it's you, it's like feminine menswear almost with a big collar and like Thank the decreases. You. Like it feels like, oh! like a, it feels like a long sleeve polo. Thank but you. But like I subtle love, luxury. I freaking love a, co a collared like top. I'm Incredible. a big like oversized button down tucked into jeans. Like I like that vibe. That, so. I am really so inspired and wanted it one. Like. Amazing. It's like amazing. I've yeah. been really and okay another okay wait just another thing that I could mm. like the Elizabeth blouse from Petite Knit mm. or Do like I know that one? the collar one. I it's actually just, might not know it. I'm yeah. just like now I'm noticing all these different collar mm -hmm. freaking things that you want. Things yeah. and I'm like I don't know. So but I'm yeah I'm so excited and my goal was to finish this. Well, originally my goal was to do this in like March and to finish my half wrap in February, but I was like so addicted to this. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be hopefully done in the next week so that I can wear it. Like, and it's perfect because it's really light. I'm talking so fast. <laughs> I'm so excited. We're like, yeah, <laughs> I love it. Um, I think it'll be a great like summer night. Like I'll wear it as a shirt yeah. or like over a little, a little t-shirt, like a white t-shirt. It oh. really is so <laughs> soft. It's like a sweatshirt. Yeah, it's perfect. So I'm super excited. And yeah, I think that the length is perfect, but if not, I have like endless more yarn to lengthen it amazing so this is my favorite thing and i'm so proud of myself because i feel like i'm really acing the wearable cozy perfect yeah um for me like garments so amazing that's my almost fo so my almost fo it's, is it's amazing. kind of has a similar vibe because it's um so it is I don't know if can just hold it up. So this is the Jacon sweater um, by La Style Knitting. Keep it on. has a puff sleeve. It's yeah. like a very unique um, puff sleeve. So good. With a saddle shoulder, which I had never done before. So good. And a little bit of, it, I made it with a tight crew neck. Um, mm -hmm. That was the first modification is I didn't cast on and do the neckline. I just started right at the Oh, um, that's the very chest. bold. And then came back later and picked up and knit the neckline. And that was because, A, I was having a lot of frustration, honestly, with um, doing the tubular cast on. Like, it was, I was huh. really, it was very hard for me. I've never um, done a tubular cast on. I always just do a cable cast on. Yeah, it was, um, I wanted it to have, like, a beautiful finish, but it was really making me frustrated and, like, not happy. And I think it was because I was doing it on a size one needle with a dark fingering weight yarn. And I was like, I just, I need to fix this and do it in a way that makes me happy and makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. So I love picking up and knitting collars. I also find that they look really clean and finished. It like, it yeah, a bit. exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I did and just did, I've but been I would doing be scared of that mod. Like that's really impressive. Cause it's really nice. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't know. It was easy. Um, and then I did the style shoulder and this is the reason I bought the pattern was for this puff sleeve, um, which you can see is pretty unique. I find it to be a little bit um, more dramatic than like when people just knit increases, which like I love her designs, but Fabel did, or Fable Fabel Knitwear um, does a lot of puff sleeves. And I've always been like, it's almost what I want, mm -hmm. but I want something that's like a little bit more dramatic and doesn't look as obviously knit. I don't know if that makes sense. It's perfect. And so this, you actually, I won't tell the exact technique, but you go in after and like sew sections. And that's why it's like really oh. gather. It's like a gather, like you do yeah. a gather 
um, as if you were sewing. That's cool. But with, with like, knit fabric, which is pretty yeah. cool. I um, strongly dislike knitting. Or, sorry, I strongly dislike sewing while I'm knitting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not, that was, yeah. Canceled. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so that, like, turned me off a little bit, but worth it for the finished product. And then I'm also modifying the sleeves. I'm at a little bit of an awkward part. I'm about to finish, you can see. Um, one moment. <laughs> Please hold. Um, I'm about to finish the ribbing on the sleeve, which I'm doing with size one double pointed, um, which are actually my soft knitting needles. God bless you with that. <laughs> I, okay, side note, I don't wanna like knock on wood. Like I, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> these <cute. laughs> sock needles I've had for like, four years and I've knit like I was shocked that you said that socks. you prefer wood DPN like tiny DPN and like I don't know why they haven't broke like it's weird to me these have gone like everywhere in the world with me but <laughs> anyway um was the sleeve not supposed to be so the sleeve she does what's called like a bishop sleeve and she does this like if you look up the pattern again called jacond mm -hmm. um which means Mona Lisa like that's what they call the Mona Lisa in French I was like okay huh. um but the sleeves that she does are also like kind of funky and sewn and have a very intense, it's like one single pleat. Don't like it. Um, <laughs> or don't like it for me in this moment. So I just did a really uh, rapid decrease and then have made my own kind of cinched uh, bell sleeve. No, that's not cinched bishop yeah. sleeve, I think as well. I mean, this is another example, I think with both of these two FOs or two whips, like of taking a pattern and making it just exactly right for you and it's also so simple with those two like mm -hmm. pops of drama yeah it's like incredible and that color is so incredible the yarn is earl gray fiber company gunpowder sock um and it's the colorway is drab and it's like this dark green black which is pretty much to me a perfect color i i'm it's really nice and I also love that it has for me like a very this has the most positive ease of a sweater I've made in a really, really? long time um I love that it's kind of like an oversized fit but with these really feminine details mm -hmm. and the neckline is tight so it's I don't know I think it's going to be a really interesting fit I think it's going to be pretty modern very um, like New York yeah but kinda. also uber wearable because yeah. I was nervous about like looking like a pretty pr pretty pretty princess which i do enjoy from time to time but like yeah. not for this color and I think the dark green really helps with that yeah i don't know i'm really excited to see the finished product um and can't wait to share with you guys next time so i love it yeah it's been and a total joy to knit you bought that yarn to ryan mexico to ryan mexico and i don't know what's going on with earl gray fiber company because i looked up i had forgotten what this base was called yeah. i think they were closing because she was going to school or something oh well there you go Okay. Best of luck in her studies or something. Yeah. Don't quote me. Um, That's amazing. I'm so excited for us to both to finish. This. Yeah, it'll be so fun. You know what's funny is it's kind of this, oh my gosh, it's like the same <laughs> fit as this top. Yeah. I didn't even notice that. I love this top. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, yeah, and that's my sole whip right amazing. now. Really? Okay, yeah. I have two more. Yeah. Um. Well, two more that I'll show. It's your... You're crazy if you think there's <laughs> only three whips here. Um, <laughs> okay, this one is just a little baby beginner because if I was about to finish a sweater and not have a garment on the needles, agony and tears. Mm -hmm. um, Literally. Here she is. I don't know. I what, have no idea what this is going to be. <laughs> it's a cable vest by oh. Sari Nordland. Oh. Um, and it is knit with... Um, Do you remember the name right now? <laughs> Keaton vest. Okay, yeah, that, I, I think that is right. I'm amazing. It's That's, a V-neck, like pretty basic cable, um, like a t-shirt vibe. So yeah. I'm gonna wear it with, like with a little white t-shirt under it. These are the yarns, okay? This is Pickles yarn that I got on my trip to Norway. And it's like Ugh. super weird because it's mohair, alpaca, wool, like, and it's not plied. It is weird. It yeah. is a little weird. It's a she's weird, and I didn't get a lot of it, so I was like, "What the heck am I gonna make with this?" And I think it needs to be held with something, or else it's gonna like pill. Yeah. Um. And I've heard that pickles pills. Okay. So this is knitting for olive. Um. And I kind of remembered this being more chartreuse, but it's fine. So now it's gonna be like olive, like an olive like. This is like your martini t shirt. Vest. It's my martini. We're gonna you're gonna knit ah! it. You're gonna knit the Diane Keaton vest, and then we're gonna go drink filthy martinis together. 
That's real, real cute. It's, I didn't even think of Diane Keaton, but you're right. Yeah. That's cute. If it's yeah. not called the Keaton Fest, that's awkward. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think this is like one of the whatevers yeah. side back or something, but um, catch me with a lot more of this done next time. I love it. I'm I so excited. Awesome. Again, just like wearable tech, so cute. Great color. We both kind of have a similar green vibe yeah. going on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another green. Our sad New York colors. I love it. I'm going to steal this little ball bag. So anyways, that's what that is. And then <laughs> my other, I was, I was supposed to finish my half wrap in March, but like, it's just not as exciting as my other stuff. And I'm really sorry, but that's, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. I'm knitting a sock in this magical red. What? Um, not your red pop being the sock. I love it. Thank you. It is the toe up sock from Pearl Soho. And as you can see, it's ribbed with little Pearls yeah amazing um and it's just gonna be very basic um because i'm trying to become a sock girl and it is in this mm. cutie patootie little um project bag from retrosaria rosa pomar whoa and these cables so are wild isn't it's, it nice it's kind of so weird pretty. so yeah. i'm hoping it'll just be like really basic and then if that is super wearable then like i'm gonna become a sock happy person because yeah Ugh, i love knitting socks um so i nice. want a drawer full and this is um this yarn is from newberg newberg yarn company and they just released like some incredible colors and it's just merino nylon and it's so soft it Amazing. feels like it has yeah. cashmere um yeah it does feel like it's an mcn i'm hoping that it doesn't plot like pill too much no i don't think it will because it's a tight knit and it is like it's a little loose ply, but like not crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and I just think it's beautiful. Yeah, so. it's amazing. Um, um, this is gonna be like your little red pop. Little red pop. Yeah, I, I love, love it. it. Um, Wait, I didn't even know you were into knitting socks. What kind of inspired that? I've always I've been wanting to for a long time. Yeah. Um, I knit the Sunday socks. Oh yeah, you were knitting a few and pairs of Sunday those socks. Those are like big, you know. So yeah. I was like worsted weight or something. So I was like, okay, I can do this. Yeah. Um, this is like my third or fourth sock it's pair stunning. ever. It's amazing. Um, I really like it. Victoria's also knitting them in something else. So it's just like a cutie little guy. But I haven't worked on it a ton because I just am so addicted to the garments right now. Yeah. And then my other whips. I think actually are solely the Yoko top, which I still am going to do, but I'm going to pick it up when it's warmer mm -hmm. and the half wrap, um, which I've made a lot of progress with, but, um, I think I have like two thirds of the second half left. Yeah. Um, as well as I guess I should show, I got this really cutie little bag. This is adorable. Where did Thank you get you. this? I got it at like, what's it called? This like Israeli restaurant that does not define my politics um in um manhattan oh um and they were just selling like they had like it like a little shop it's so cute thank you and it holds my love blanket squares with oh, the needles that you lent me thank you you've been working so hard on those i'm doing one a week are you actually yeah so it's gonna get done by the end of this goddamn year so help me god wow so that's that on that. Oh my Did gosh. I ever show my basket? I must have. I got this from Trader Joe's for $4. I love it. Um, it's so cute. So, and this is like an old pretty bag. So anyways. Wait, this is really cute. I want one. Yeah, it's really, I really like it. Can I show you my project bag? Yeah, of I've course. I really I want more project bags. <gasps> so this is from Ter 21 Terra, which like if you live in New York, they're- it's beautiful. They sell uh, Indian goods. Oops. And like beautiful Indian cottons and pajamas Wait, it's and so linens, nice. um, and I got PJs that came in here that are in this print, which I've been loving. But then it came; they came in this bag, and it's perfect because it has this little button closure. Because my knitting is constantly getting caught in, in um, zippers, so I've been really loving this, and it just makes me so happy to to pick up. Wait, that's it's so, really and I nice. couldn't recommend this PJ company more. <laughs> so yeah. not sponsored not sponsored unfortunately um last thing i wanted to share yeah. is i've been casting on and then frogging a lot mm. and it's helping me a lot to play i feel like you've been swatching i feel like the word for that is swatching like basically you've been like creative swatching i don't know how i feel about that okay well, well i'll mull and i'll get back Let's, to you we'll table the swatching <laughs> but um the yarns that are in sort of pending use are okay these. yeah and these are both from Retro Saria and Rosa Pomar. Mm. It's an unspun and an Al and a Surrey. Mm. And then um, these are like 
store brand alpaca and I you're got, so good at finding like really soft surreys I really like surrey I mean all surreys are really soft okay yeah my dirty little secret never knit with a surrey it's so much better than mohair it's these go crazy this is insane it's just like better than mohair and it's like less like yuck, yeah like you know yeah it's not as issue um <laughs> and then I'm I've got this like charcoal alpaca mm. from perfect blend i love that yarn I've never and i was gonna times. do just this but then i was like okay there's just a lot of black going on yeah. i also have another so i think i'm gonna do stripes Ooh, cute what are you gonna do with that i think i'm gonna do an oversized collared stripes with a little like thing there's a santa's garden pattern that okay. i could, cannot find the book for unless I buy freaking sweater quantity from them, uh -huh. which actually they're not that expensive. I didn't realize, but I'm not doing that. Yeah, because <laughs> I have yarn and I'm mad of whatever. I think it's silly. Yeah, that is silly. Somebody, one of you actually did ask for one of their patterns, and I gave it, so you all can have it too. That's but really anyways. Nice. Um, so I'm gonna do the stripe pattern with like the little like the white bind off mm. kind of a vibe. Um, but I think I'm gonna use the either the petite knit or like another one that I found, like collar thing and like make it with out of that, like kind of combine the patterns. So anyways, those are my plans. Um, that Those are beautiful. I almost want you to knit, do you know that Pearl Soho pattern that's like the really thin stripes that Caitlin did from Caddy Drax? No. Or now from A Little Life, the new podcast? Yeah, I really liked it by the way. I have, I have I to watch her. it. I'm so happy she's back. Um, um, so she did a Pearl Soho pattern ages ago, which was like basically helical knitting, but like one black yarn, one white one yarn. Oh, and like I, one row each? And I thought it looked so pretty. I'm still obsessed with that sweater, and I think that would be a perfect that's for cool. it. Well, because I feel like I wanted to like brighten it up, because that's my issue with this one, is like I love it, but I want a little, like my face to be brightened up. Yeah, totally. Um, and I thought this would just like, you know, um, and I, I want it to be so. drapey and delicious, and um, I've had this forever, so nice we'll see that's a good idea i'll look into that yeah um i really like that pattern i would want to knit that also um so i want to show the yarn that i'm about to work i was with. gonna say do you have any plans i have a lot of plans to ah. work so <laughs> i have these two basically sweater oh. quantities so the first one i think i showed okay after... grand beige era um yeah it's like for springtime i don't know i thought it'd be nice <laughs> but funny. that was um, a good laugh <laughs> you used to be so neon i'm really Ooh. excited oh my gosh sorry it's okay um I know, but I don't know. I, I've been wanting to find, like, a white that I like for a long time that's not, like, pure white. Um, and this yarn I am so excited about. I found it at Rhinebeck, Garthenor. It's, like, uh, the brand is... Oh, I guess it is Garthenor. I thought they were called something else. But, yeah, they're Scottish wool. Um, really soft rustic yarn. Like, insanely soft, light, fabulous. I bought a sweater quantity. I'm so excited about it's it. really, really nice. And I'm going to do a knit that I've wanted to do forever, which is the bright sweater. The Junko Okamoto. Wee. This is sport weight. That yarn, that sweater calls for sport weight. It's been on my to knit list since I started knitting. Um, and I haven't done one of her patterns and they bring me total joy. I think this is the perfect yarn for it. Um, I'm really looking well, forward to this. Will you help me grade it up a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Because I want to do it too. Yeah. I've been looking at it again, but yeah. it's just, it's like a few inches smaller than yeah. I want it to be. I'm a little nervous about it. I think it's like a one size pattern. I know. So that's why I want to you me. to knit it and then help me. Totally. I'll knit it and I'll see like <laughs> yeah. what, like, is it a needle size? Is it a yarn thing? Is well, because like that's what she's increases? like, pick your needle size. I'm like, that's like not helpful. Yeah. I know. But I think it's going to be really cool. Um, that's amazing, Hannah. So that's going to be my next cast on. I love your style because you do. You do your like gray funky textures and then you do your neon or your like and then you do your like all over the place no, or i'll do like no, or i'll do like perfect. very neutral like this is like a sweater you could buy it's a shaker perfect yeah i love it i um, love knitting i love knitting too <laughs> so my next one is crazy um my boyfriend went to new zealand <gasps> Oh yeah. Oh my God. I forgot. And I haven't shown this yarn yet because last time we just did our, like our 2023 knits, mm -hmm. but he, when he was in New Zealand, he went to yarn stores and I was like, he, he, he like sent me the yarn stores. Um, and I was looking at them and everyone's Isn't like, that beautiful love. It was really, I know. That's like my <laughs> love language. She's like, ah. Oh. My love language is like you FaceTiming me from New Zealand yarn stores. Um, <laughs> but 
I looked at the art store and they're like famous for their possum wall. And I was like, excuse me, what? She announced this at midnight. We were all like, everyone was like, <laughs> scary, weird. We also like, if you're from the Southwest, you're like, okay, I've done a lot of research into it. You're like, gross possums because there's an animal called opossum, which in the United States we also just call possum, which is different from a possum. <laughs> Here so we are. A possum. 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 Opossums are what we have in the U.S., but colloquial, we just call them possums. Also because a possum, like, you barely even hear the O. It's, like, basically a silent O. It's, like, o. a possum. Yeah, exactly. Or um, an opossum. But a po- a p- just a possum. P-O-S. A possum. Yeah. A space possum. <laughs> <laughs> is not gross. Is not gross and actually has nice okay. wool and, like, fur. And so <laughs> this is a, I got a sweater's quantity of possum wool. <laughs> this is DK from Zilana Rimu, which is like the possum wool company. And it's 60% New Zealand Merino, 40% brush tail possum. Possum. Um, <laughs> I'm still a little like, mm, I don't know. Scared of it. But um, then again, like people knit with their dogs fur, so. Oh, come on. This is way, this is like a treated <laughs> wool. Like this, I'm not knitting with someone dirty No, it's dog like there. amazing. And it does, it's nice. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so I'm going to knit, I think I'm going to knit a vest with this, but I yeah. don't know which vest. Are you wanting like texture or are you wanting like clean? Um, I think with this yarn, I'm wanting texture. So I think Petite Knit has like a half fisherman's rib vest, which I think mm. would be really nice. Um, but I'm leaving my options open. You actually haven't knit very much Petite Knit, if any. No. That's so I'm allowed funny. to? Well, no. I mean, I... I do it on, you know, people, it's great. Um, but, but I don't, yeah, I'm also, like, open to vest patterns. So I would say if you made it this far in the episode, <laughs> pop your favorite vest pattern down below. Um, wow, I'm excited. And I'm do sorry you have for a vest naysaying. pattern that you like? There's, like, a couple I've been looking at. Um, actually, there was one that Amy Sure made. I think I saw it. I think it was on the short list. Yeah. That I thought was really pretty. It has, like, funky kind of a um, symmetrical Yeah, details. Cable. Um, I really like also Petite Knit's new like button one. I consider that one. But that could be more pretty. Funky. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's gonna be interesting. Like, what's this this color also as a vest? Like, what color am I wearing underneath it? I think white. Um. Yeah, I think actually you want like a rib or a brioche. You don't yeah. necessarily want something like super. So I'm gonna know. I'm gonna spend some time with that. Um. But yeah, and I'm really. <gasps> Wait. There is one. Hold on. I, there's one that I found. It's in my Ravelry Ooh, list. I'm Hold excited. on. Wait. It's like a, because I was going to say, do you want like a t shirt vibe? Or do I you honestly, want like, like I think a, I want like kind of an oversized, top. like grandpa vibe. Like, a well, what about this one? That's basically what I, that is so glamorous. Okay. Oh my gosh. You just pulled that up so quickly. It's I in like my Rav favorites. I actually live on Ravelry. Anyways, it's the um, Cocoon Choki. Wait, that's amazing. By Noriko Ichikawa. Wow. And here it is on a hanger. Oh okay. my gosh. It's, it's perfect. Incredible. I love it. I love the oversized fit, but like mm-hmm. the cropped length. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that's an option. Oh my gosh, look at the style. Will you show the styled version? Yeah. Also, like, that's just going to be me. I know. It's perfect. With a little button down, I can't. It's really beautiful. I know. Um, we're going to be best buddies. We're going to be total best and buddies. And it's like no sleep, so you're living your best fucking life. Yeah. I think that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. I forgot about that. Another one that I found. <laughs> this <laughs> is so much fun. <laughs> we should do an episode. <clears throat> oh my gosh. I know. Oh my gosh. I'm thinking about making this. I could have pulled it up bigger, but you're yeah. fine. It's fine. You're going to live. Um, with this like that combo. Com- oh my gosh. But then I'm like, I don't want this to be like too aggressively warm. So I think like, it will be aggressively. But maybe also it's a big a cardigan. Mm. But that's not as fun. But like a big shawl cardigan is like so luxury. But that collar in this? I know. It's crazy. But that's what I'm saying. Shawl collar. Oh, sorry. Shawl collar. Do you cardigan. think it would be too warm? I think, yeah. I think you do a lot of heavy knits that, that so I don't not to be like. No, yeah, it's like, true. Like, That's why I'm like, I this is like, like. You do heavy knits and like, you don't wear them because they're just 100%. too warm. Um, I, I have to think about what the heck to make with this because it is so warm. Yeah. Yeah, probably just like a brioche cardigan. Mm, that'd be really nice though. Um, okay, is that it? Yeah. All Thank right. you so much for watching. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> we were kind of like unraveling over the course of this episode. <laughs> um, but thank you for watching. We'll be back soon and happy knitting.